Okay, good evening, good evening. This is Pastor Shea from My Identity in Christ Church. Today we're going to be looking at a very interesting subject that I believe has the power to radically transform your life if you understand it. Many of us, we pray and we wish that God can show us the answer or give us the answer to our breakthroughs. Sometimes we're praying to God, we're asking God to deliver us from things that we don't know are affecting, that we believe might be affecting our lives. And sometimes we're asking God, when is my breakthrough going to happen? When is it going to happen? When am I going to get answers to prayer? When is my life going to change? Sometimes we ask God and we cry out to God and we say, God, why am I going through what I'm going through? Why do I have to keep on laboring in faith? Why am I going through the pain of disappointment? God, why am I going through the pain of disappointment? God, why am I going through the same old problems over and over again? You and I, if we want to be honest with ourselves, we've been in a place in our past, or perhaps maybe you might be going through that right now, whereby you're asking God, I've fasted, I've prayed, but for some reason, I just do not seem to be breaking through. God, I've read your word. I've prophesied your promises. I've quoted the scriptures. I've read the scriptures. I've meditated on the scripture. But why am I not moving forward? Why does it feel like my life remains stagnant? What could be the problem, God? Father God, I'm tired. I am sick and tired of being tired. How many times have you cried out to God? How many times have you actually asked God, what could be the reason why? You're not seeing the results that you want to see in your life. Today, I want to share something with you that I believe would help to clarify some of your questions and help you in the right direction. And for those who join us today, my name is Pastor Shea from My Identity in Christ Church. And we're going to be looking at a subject that I've titled, How to Overcome Barriers to Breakthrough. How to Overcome Barriers to Breakthrough. Now, to help me share this with you what we're going to be doing is looking at the book of Luke so if you got your Bible there please turn with me to Luke chapter 1 I'm going to be reading from verse 5 to 38 that's Luke chapter 1 I'm going to read from verse 5 to 38 and it reads when Herod was king of Judah there was a Jewish priest named Zachariah he was a member of the priestly order of Abijah and his wife Elizabeth was also from the priestly line of Aaron Zachariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes, careful to obey all of the Lord's commandments and regulations. They had no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive and they were both very old. One day Zachariah was serving God in the temple for his order, was on duty that week. As was the custom of the priest, he was chosen by law to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and burn incense. While the incense was being burnt, he cried so while the incense was being burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. Now, while Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right side of the incense. So, standing to the right side of the incense altar, Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw the angel. But the angel said to him, "Don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife Elizabeth will give you a son, and you are to name him John." You will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He must be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth, and he will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit of power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. Zachariah said to the angels, how can I be sure this will happen? I am an old man now and my wife is also well along in years. Then the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. But now, since you did not believe what I have said to you, you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. For my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah to come out of the sanctuary, wondering why is it taking so long? When he finally did come out, he couldn't speak to them. Then they realized from his gestures and his silence that he must have seen a vision in the sanctuary. 
When Zacharias' week of service in the temple was over, he returned home. Soon afterwards, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and went into seclusion for five months. How kind the Lord is, she exclaimed. He has taken away my disgrace of having no children. Now, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman of God. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean by this. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his, fa of his ancestor, David, and he will reign over Israel forever, and his kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? Because I'm a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived the son and is now in a sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Hallelujah. I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. This is what she said. Now I want to talk to you about how to overcome the barriers to breakthrough. Now we read the account of a man named Zachariah. Now I just want to give a bit of a, a picture, the background. You see, Zachariah was a priest, the Bible says. He was a man of God. In our day and age, he probably was a bishop, probably was a pastor, probably was an evangelist. Now the title does not really matter. The fact of the matter was, Zachariah was a man of God. He was a man who knew the ways of God. He was a man who followed God. And he was a man who served God, especially he served God in the temple. He served God at church. He understood the importance of working with God. And he was not, he had no problem whatsoever in serving and working with God. Here we see a man named Zachariah who was faithful and righteous, the Bible says. He was a righteous man, meaning he lived his life. Both him and his wife lived a righteous lifestyle. We cannot say that because of their sin, that's the reason why his wife was barren. No, they lived a righteous lifestyle. But nevertheless, he was a man who was going into the temple to burn incense. Now the question is, why was he burning incense? He was burning incense to intercede on behalf of the people because that was the job of the priest. The job of the priest back in those days was to intercede on behalf of the people. People were hurting, people had dreams, people had hopes, people needed God to intervene in their life. Back then, society was different. People faced severe hardship. Things that you and I probably face today is nothing in comparison to what people faced back in those days. Sometimes people were starving, don't have any food to eat. Sometimes people were suffering from leprosy and they wanted to be healed because if they're not healed, they are excluded from the community, excommunicated and left alone to survive for themselves and they're vulnerable and are prey to anything and everything out there. So these people were crying out to God. They went to the priest regularly to seek the face of God. God help me. Just like you and I were praying in our closet. God I've got this problem. God I've got that problem. Can you help me? Now the people in back during, the, uh, during the days of Zechariah, they depended on on the priest to intercede for them because Jesus had not died. Jesus had not died. And because Jesus had not died, they didn't have what we have today. They did not have a direct relationship between God and man. They had to go to a priest who would be the mediator. But well, glory be to God that we have a mediator today. We have a mediator who is Jesus Christ. Because of one man's death, we have direct access to God. In other words, we no longer need a priest to hear from God. We no longer need a priest to seek the face of God. We can boldly approach the throne of grace to receive mercy. Hallelujah. But that is not the point of today's message. The point of this message is this, Zachariah was not a man, man, he was a man of God. He knew God's ways, he knew God can do the impossible, he knew nothing is difficult for God, nothing will be impossible for God. He knew God is the I am that I am, he knew the awesomeness of God, he knew God intimately, he knew him and he knew his ways because the Bible called him a righteous man. Now how would he be a righteous man if he didn't live his life according to the patterns of the instruction of the word of God? according to the patterns of the Torah back in those days, because then they didn't have the Bible back in those days. They had the Torah. and the So basically, he was a man who knew 
the 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 requirements of God and he fashioned his lifestyle to that. But nevertheless, he had a need. Zachariah had a need. Him and his wife were barren. Can you just imagine how a priest who is married, who's leading people, who's praying for people, seeking the face of God for people, helping people to seek the face of God, crying out to God, fasting, praying to God, to, for God to intervene in the lives of the people who followed him, in the life of people who were dependent on his ability to communicate with God, to pass on the message from God to them. How much more so would somebody like that feel? Having been able to pray for others, watching other people get answers to prayer, watching other people get their breakthrough, but yet it was left in the same situation, unanswered prayer. He had a desperate need for a child, but unfortunately, it could not. Unfortunately, he didn't have a child. So what happened? We saw very clearly. An angel of the Lord, Genjo Gilbert to be specific, appeared to him and told him that God has answered your prayer and you're going to be with child. But unfortunately, Zachariah was not in the process, was not in the mind frame of faith, I would say. Zachariah did not believe that God can do what God can do. Sometimes you and I might feel like, oh, I've waited for so long. Sorry, guys, I'm just trying to charge this phone now. Uh, some of you might feel like I've waited for so long, but God has not answered my prayer. I've fasted and prayed, but God has not answered my prayer. Sometimes you might have done all the things that you know to do, but yet you've not seen an answer to your prayer. And you're wondering, God, I am a man of God. God, I've served faithfully in the house of God. God, I've paid my tithe. God, I've been a help to the body of Christ. But how come you've used me, God, to be a blessing unto other people but despite my obedience despite my submission to your decrees how come my life hasn't changed you've used me to minister to people to give a word to people to bless people and i've seen their life transform for the power of the holy spirit but how come that same power is not made manifest in my life god what is going on i'm sure you've all been there whether you've asked yourself does god really care about your particular problem or is god just using you as a vessel to minister unto other people or what could it be what is the reason why god is not answering your prayer I want you to picture this. Zachariah was a man of God. He was not a baby Christian. He knew the ways of God. God used him mightily. God used him to intercede on behalf of the people because he was a priest and that's what he did. Now imagine him coming home every day knowing that I've heard from God for Mr. J. Joe Bloggs. I've heard from God for Mr. Adam. I've heard from God for Mr. Jacob. And this is what God is saying. Your prayer has been answered or you've been forgiven or whatever the case might be. He was delivering messages from God to the people. He was interceding on behalf of the people to God. He was interceding. Basically means he will go to God with the concerns and with the prayer requests of the people. God will answer the prayer and then he will come back and tell them, God has answered your prayer. That is basically what the priests used to do back then. They were the middleman between God and man because of sin. Now picture this. For years he did this. And on this occasion, he was actually on duty. It's just like a pastor might be on duty to preach this morning or this afternoon or this evening. And despite being on duty, the prayer, the cry of his heart, which was to have a child, the longing of his heart, which was to have a child, the desperation in his heart, which was to have a child, what he's been believing God for for years, not months, it grown so accustomed to believing God, to waiting on God for it, that he did not know when he stepped outside of faith. He had grown so used to expecting and hoping that God would deliver the answer, i.e. by them getting pregnant. But because of the time he had taken, because of many years had gone past and no baby had shown up, his wife had not gotten pregnant. In fact, the whole community declared her barren. As we read the scriptures, they said she's been barren. The scripture tells them um, Elizabeth had been barren for many years. So he had grown accustomed to that state of mind. He had gotten used to being Zachariah, the man who's married to a woman who cannot bear him a child. So when the angel Gabriel appeared to him and said, Zachariah, God has heard your prayer and he has sent me specifically 
as the answer to your prayer. You're going to have a son. Zachariah looked at the angel saying, you must be crazy. You cannot be serious. The interesting thing for me here is this. Before Zachariah responded to the angel, the Bible tells us that Zachariah was scared. Now, why was he scared? He was scared because he was experiencing the supernatural for the first time. He was experiencing the supernatural in such a level that he hadn't experienced before. He hadn't seen an angel before, so he was startled. He was like, wow, what is this? Now, the interesting thing is this. Zachariah had a need, he had a desire, which is to have a child. And he meant to have prayed and saw the face of God for years, but nothing had happened. Now, on this particular occasion, when he was not expecting it, the Lord sent an angel to him. Now, if that was me, just looking at the angel alone is enough for me to believe that, yes, God is doing something new. But Zachariah's state of mind was so shallow, was so hopeless that even in though he was experiencing the supernatural his mind set and his heart was focused firmly on the natural Zachariah who needed a supernatural divine intervention in the life of him and his wife in order for them to conceive Zachariah who had prayed to God for years and probably fasted and prayed for years hoping that one day they will have a child Zachariah who has served God faithfully hoping that one day they will have a child but yet when the angel Gabriel appeared to Zachariah he met Zachariah with, as a man who lacked faith so in his service to God he was faithful he was a priest he was on duty and he regularly did those things without fail but his heart was not in faith he said to the angel how can I have a child how can this be how can this be the angel said look I stand in the presence of God and he has sent me to you Zachariah to give you this answer Zachariah despite experiencing the supernatural he had grown accustomed to the natural. Zachariah, despite experiencing the supernatural, he had grown accustomed to the natural. Zachariah, despite expecting the supernatural, missed the supernatural when the supernatural happened. Zachariah, despite believing in the supernatural, Zachariah rejected the supernatural. What can that tell us? What does that tell us? That tells us that faith is not a one-time event. Faith is not something you just pick up like a pill and drink. Faith is a lifestyle. The Bible says, now the just shall live by faith. Now the just shall live by faith. What does that mean? It means it must be a lifestyle. You don't say, I'm in faith because I've prayed and I'm believing God's going to do it. I'm in faith because I went to church last night and the prayer was awesome. I'm in faith because I went to church yesterday and the prayer was awesome. I'm in faith because I received a word today and I'm standing strong in that word. No. Yes, those things are good. Yes, go to church. Yes, pray and stand on the word of God. But it must be a lifestyle. Every day you wake up and say, yes, I have not seen the manifestation of the glory of God, but I'm going to stand strong. Because in order for you to see the manifestation of God, you have to have the expectation. You must stand in faith regardless of what goes on in your life the bible says man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the living god man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the living god now what does bread represent bread represents sustenance your day-to-day -day needs you're not going to say because of the fact that you've not had your day-to-day -day needs met you're doubting whether god can do it you're doubting whether god can answer your prayer i want you to encourage you to do that look zachariah was a man of god you might feel like oh maybe i'm so bad that i'm not so such a good christian that my faith is so small maybe because i don't read my bible all the time that's why my faith is so small no zachariah was a man of god he was a man who knew God's ways? It was a man who knew how to hear from God. It was a man who served God faithfully. But his service to God faithfully did not correspond with his faith in God. It is possible for you to serve God faithfully, but that does not guarantee that your heart condition is faithfully serving God. You might demonstrate an outward appearance to people that you are a faithful servant of God. But what matters in the sight of God, not man, is what's going on with your heart. It's your heart expecting the supernatural, yet rejecting the supernatural when the supernatural shows up. Zachariah was expecting the supernatural move of God for God to make 
get them pregnant, for God to give them a child. But when an angel, not even a word from a prophet, not even a dream, an angel, a supernatural being manifested itself with the answer saying, God sent me to tell you you're going to have a child. Even though you were startled, even though you were scared, at the fact that he was experiencing the supernatural, something he had never experienced before, despite the fact that he was fear, uh, was scared of, of the supernatural, i.e. the angel he was speaking to, he was still focused in his heart on the natural. His heart was firmly rooted in the natural. That's why he said, how can this be? Now, I could understand if a man came to him and said, God sent me, you're going to have a son. I can understand if he said, how can this be? Because obviously he's looking at the man from a natural perspective. But that is not what happened. A supernatural being appeared to him and spoke to him and said, you're going to have a child. And he still asked the question, how can this be? Why? Because he lacked faith. Now, here's something I want to really draw your attention to. Why we're we talking about the title of this message, which is how to overcome the barriers to your breakthrough. I want you to really zone in on this. Just follow me with this. Now, Meanwhile, the people, uh, now let's go, let's go step back to verse 19 of Luke chapter 1, verse 19. Then the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. It was he who sent me. In other words, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. It was God who sent me to, now, so now, then the, angel said, sorry, then the angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. It was God who sent me to bring you this good news. But now, since you did not believe what I said, you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. For my words will certainly be, be fulfilled at the proper time. Now, the angel was saying to Zachariah, that, look, I am Gabriel. In other words, I'm trying to remind you, look, I am Gabriel. I've been sent from God. What was that saying to Zachariah? Look, Zachariah, pay attention. What you're experiencing now is the supernatural. Zachariah, pay attention. What you're experiencing now is the supernatural. Get your eyes off the natural. Get your eyes off the fact that you've been waiting for years and can't conceive. Get your eyes off the fact that you're getting old. Because it's not about worth. It's by faith. Now the just shall live by faith. The Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags inside of God. Everything we try to do by ourselves is not, it's nothing in comparison to what God wants to do in our lives. But a lot of the times we're trying to demonstrate the move of God through works. We're trying to gain favor with God through works. Zachariah was a man who was faithful to God in his service. But in his heart, it was not faithful to God. He was faithful to God in the outward demonstration that what people can see. He was faithful, but he was not faithful to God in his heart. God gave them a word a long time ago that they would have a child. But he was not faithful to God in his heart. He was faithful to only one thing, and that is what he can see. The reality around him, which was the fact that they have not been able to conceive. My question to you today how many times have you been believing God or praying to God or asked God to intervene in your life? But then your mind and your heart is still firmly focused on your circumstances. Sometimes we say, God, I want you to intervene. I want you to give me a breakthrough. But all you see is chaos around you and that is what you're focused in. So with your lips, you're professing that you believe and you're trusting God. But with your heart, you've abandoned God. I want to encourage you today that the Bible has all the answer. God wants you not to give up. He wants you to stay in faith. He wants you to stay in his word. The Bible says the just shall live in faith by faith. The just shall live by faith. In other words, the righteous shall live by faith. Those who have pronounced Jesus, those who have accepted Jesus as the Lord and personal Savior, we are called to live by faith. What does that mean? It means even when all hell break loose, even when it seems like God has gone on a holiday, even when it seems like God is not listening, even when it seems like your even when it seems like your problem is expanding rather than shrinking, the just shall live by faith. It is a commandment. It's not a request. It's not a suggestion. It's what is expected of you. So Zechariah here we see was a man of God. He knew the ways of God. He served God faithfully outwardly, but inwardly he was not faithful to the promises of God for his life. And he almost missed it. He literally almost missed it, if not for the grace of God. That's why we've got to thank God for grace. There are things that you and I 
prayed to God for, sought the face of God for, cried out to God for, but we've missed it because of one thing and one thing only, which I'm going to touch on in a minute. Are you focused on God as you wait on God? Or are you focused on what you see around you? Let me share this with you. What you focus, whatever that thing is, it expands. If you focus on God, God will expand in your life. If you focus on your problems, your problem will expand in your life. If you focus that God can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, if you so if you focus on you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, that, was, that would be your encourager. That would be your motivator. That would be your guide. That would be that very thing that pushes you forward. The Bible says the word of God is active, is alive, and is a spirit. So I want to encourage you today to hold on to that word that God has given you. Hold on to that word that you've read. Hold on to that word that God has spoken to you. Don't give up because the just shall live by faith. It might feel like God has abandoned you, but God will never leave you nor forsake you. No word that comes out from God never goes back void. The Bible says in Isaiah 55 verse 10, in Isaiah chapter 55 verse 10, please share this page, in Isaiah chapter 55 verse 10, the Bible says this, as the rain comes from heaven and waters the ground, that is how the word of God is. It can never return void. As the rain comes from heaven and waters the ground, that is how the word of God is. It can never return void. Here we see Zechariah, man of God, in the temple. He was busy getting ready to intercede on behalf of the people to God for God to answer their prayer. But in his heart, his hope in God concerning himself was completely or had completely diminished. Zachariah was busy, you know, the religiosity of getting ready to intercede for the people. But in his heart, his hope concerning the breakthrough that he was desperately seeking the face of God, the breakthrough that he had prayed to God for, the breakthrough that him and his wife are expecting God to, for, he was found in, 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 in unbelief. He did not believe. And the shocking factor was he was experiencing the supernatural. A man who was expecting the supernatural to happen in his life, experienced the supernatural happening in his life, but yet he missed it. Let me say that again. Zachariah was expecting and hoping for the supernatural to happen in his life. And when the supernatural showed up, he totally missed it because he was in the natural. The Bible says, be not conformed to the patterns of this world. Now, let's stop right there. What are the patterns of this world? Ups and downs. In this world, we're going to have ups and downs. Jesus told us very, very plainly. In this world, you're going to have many troubles. But be of good encouragement because I have overcome the world. In this world, you're going to have many troubles, Jesus said. In this world, you're going to have many troubles, Jesus said. But be of good encouragement. I have overcome the world. In this world, you're going to have many troubles, Jesus said. But be of good encouragement. I have overcome the world. Let me say that again. In this world, you're going to have many troubles, Jesus said. But be of good encouragement because I have overcome the world. Zachariah and his wife were expecting God to give them a child. They've been praying, fasting. God knows what they've done. But yet, he was a man who the Bible called righteous. He was a man who the Bible said was a priest. And he went into the temple getting ready to intercede on behalf of the people to intercede remember the priest the job of a priest back in those days was to intercede was to serve as the mediator between god and man so the people come to the priest tell them what their problems are the the priest now takes the problem to God and seeks the face of God on behalf of the people. But Zachariah was busy doing the religious thing, doing the duty of a priest. Despite the fact that he was faithful, he was faithfully serving. Nobody can knock him for that. He was faithfully serving God at the altar, but he was not faithful in his heart towards God concerning the promises of God for his life. God is a God who answers prayer. But Zachariah, despite being a priest, his heart was unfaithful to God. Outwardly, he was faithfully serving God. He was faithfully serving God outwardly. But in his heart, he was far from God in unbelief. An angel appeared to him and said, My name is Gabriel. God has sent me to tell you you're going to have a child. Zachariah said, How can this be? I am a old man. My wife is old. What does that tell you? His eyes was fixated on the natural 
the impossible. My wife is old. I'm a old man. It's so long now. How can I have a child? But God was saying, look, I've sent Gabriel to you to tell you you're going to have a child. Zachariah, you came to me, God Almighty, the God who does the impossible. And you've asked me for a child. Yes, I've not given you the answer at the time that you wanted it. But the fact of the matter is this. I've brought the answer to you now. You are expecting me to do the impossible in your life, Zachariah. Zachariah, you've been expecting the supernatural move of God for so long. But yet, when the supernatural move of God manifested in your life, you missed it because you were busy focused on the natural. Zachariah was expecting and hoping for the supernatural move of God. And when the supernatural move of God manifested itself in glory, he missed it because his eyes was focused on the natural. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the living God. Bread represents sustenance, your daily needs. Don't be moved by your daily needs. The Bible says, don't worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear. That is what the Gentiles worry about. There needs to be a demarcation between us believers and Gentiles. We have a father who loves us, who cares for us, who would do anything for us. He proved his love when he sent Jesus Christ to die for you and me. If God can freely give you heaven's most prized possession in Jesus Christ, how much more would he give you the things you need? How much more would he give you the sustenance you need? The problem that we have in our generation today is that we live in a microwave society. We want it now, we want it now, and we want it all. But with God, all things are possible. A day is like a thousand years to God. We cannot dictate to God as to when he must deliver the answer. But one thing we need know is this God will always deliver hallelujah Zachariah was a man of God he knew the ways of God but he missed that he almost missed the answer he almost missed the answer how many times have you prayed and fasted for and asking God for a breakthrough saw the face of God for a breakthrough but because of your own ignorance because of your own unbelief you would completely miss the answer God does things in different ways. He might send somebody to you as the answer. He might send a friend to you as an answer. Or he might even send an angel as an answer. Clearly we see, um, I would have thought an angel was, must have been enough. We'd say, wow, fantastic answer to prayer. Zachariah saw an angel. And he asked the question, how can this be? How can this be? Now I want to quickly share something that was going to blow your mind. As we read on in verse 26 of this chapter 1, uh, of Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Please, if you go to the Bible, follow me because I want to show you something that's going to blow your mind. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel of, to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of the King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman of God. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think, What on earth could this angel mean? Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, For you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be, a, sorry, he will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor, David, and he will reign over Israel forever, and his kingdom will never have an end. Mary asked the angel, But how can this be? As I am a virgin, the angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high God will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but now she has conceived the son and is now in a six month. For nothing is impossible with God. Hallelujah. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Hallelujah. Here we see a two different spectrums. Mary, an ordinary believer. Zachariah, a man of God. Zachariah was in faith. He said, how can this be? I know I'm experiencing the supernatural because I know you're not a human being, angel. Mr. Angel, I know you're not a human being, so you are of the supernatural. And I know I've been sick in the face of God for the supernatural, but for some reason, I feel I'm still struggling to believe the supernatural can happen to me. And the reason why I'm believing the supernatural can happen to me because it's been so many years that I've been waiting and hoping for the supernatural and it has never happened that I've grown accustomed to the natural and the natural has been my supernatural and the natural has 
has a stronger root in my life than the supernatural because the supernatural is happening today. The natural has been happening yesterday, the day before, the last year, and so on and so forth. So I've grown accustomed to the natural. So even though I'm experiencing the supernatural that I want to have a part of, I am struggling to have a part of it because it's unfamiliar to me. It is outside my comfort zone. This is what was going on with Zachariah. The question is, how many times have you seen the supernatural move of God but you've missed it because you're busy Focus on natural like Zachariah. He said, how can this be because I'm old? How can this be my wife is old? How can this be it's been so long? I don't believe that promise of having a child can come to pass. I don't believe, I think maybe my time has passed. But the angel said, the, the angel Gabriel reminded him, look, you might not be convinced by my appearance alone. I would have thought my appearance would be enough to convince you, Zachariah. But since you're not convinced, let me remind you something, Zachariah. He said, I am Gabriel. Let me introduce myself. I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God Almighty. In other words, that means when you cried out to God, I was there. Every time you've cried about your lack of baby, I was there. All the pain you and your wife went through, I was there. All the ridicules you and your wife went through in your community because you were a priest or a man of God. For some reason, you were a man of God, but the blessing of God seems to be missing you. I was there. The shame you guys faced in your community for being barren, I was there. And now God has sent me to tell you that you're going to have a child. Even though you're scared of my appearance because you've never seen an angel before, you still doubt the words that I speak to you, the words that came from the Father in heaven, the whom you are claiming to love, whom you are claiming to serve, whom you are faithful to outwardly. You can fool other people that you're a man of faith. But God sees more than that. I see your heart. In your heart, you've abandoned me. In your heart, you've rejected my word. In your heart, you've ignored the possibility of what I can do in your life. In your heart, I've ceased to become the God of the impossible. In your heart, you've limited me, Zachariah. And because of that, you're not going to be able to speak. Because I don't want your unbelief to contaminate the vision and the purpose of the life of this child that your wife is carrying. Let's read that scripture. Here we see claim. Meanwhile, um, so in verse 19, then the angel said to Zechariah, verse 19 of Luke chapter 1, then the angel said to Zechariah, I am a Gabriel, I stand in the presence of God. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. But now, since you did not believe, but now, since you did not believe, let me say that again, but now, since you did not believe, you would not be able to speak. Until the child is born. Why? Because your unbelief has the power to hinder the move of God in your life. You see, the word of God is active, is alive and is strong. Nothing can stop the word of God. The only thing that can stop the word of God from being manifested in your life is your unbelief. Now, it doesn't mean that your unbelief is greater than the word of God. No, it doesn't mean that. It just means the word of God operates on this principle. The word of God is governed by principles and God will not bend his principles for you and I. God loves you and I very much, but he will not bend his principles for you and I. Now, the same reason why God will not bend his principles for you and I, that's why his love for us is the same it's the same reason why a lot of people struggle to follow God. They say things like, if God is love, why do people go to hell? If God cares for people, why do people go to hell? If God has all power, why can't just make people believe in him? Why do people go to hell? Well, let me say something to you if you've ever thought about that. God never, and I say this again, God never and will never send a soul, not even one person to hell. God never sends people to hell. Let me say that again. God never sends people to hell. But the Bible says people are going to go to hell. Yes. Are human beings going to go to hell? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. But who sends them? Not God. So who sends them to hell? They send themselves. How? By rejecting the payment for sin, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. People send themselves to hell by rejecting the payment for sin, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. When you fail to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, what you're saying is this, I know there's a debt that I need to pay, and I know you're offering to pay my debt in full, but I don't want you to be part of it. I will pay my debt. I reject the only payment that can be taken as payment for my debt. And I'm saying I will pay my debt. And because your ability or your capacity is not strong enough, nor big enough to pay the debt that needs to be paid because the wages of sin is death. 
because you don't have the capacity and the ability to pay your debt and you refuse Jesus who has paid the debt, that's like me saying to you, you know what, you owe 5,000 pounds to the bank and they're threatening to take your house. And I'm saying, you know what, I've paid the bank the 5,000 pounds. I've put the money in the client's account. And the only time the, the bank could take that money and apply it to your account is when you sign on the dotted line. But despite the fact that I've come along and I've paid the money, I've placed the money in the reserve account, and all you need to do is to sign the document to say, yes, you accept my payment for your debt, or you accept me being um, a guarantor for you or somebody who's paid the debt for you in full, and all you have to do is sign to say, you acknowledge that, yes, Mr. Shea has paid the debt in full, and once you sign that, that payment will now be credited to your account, which means you're no longer in debt. If you fail to sign that question, are you still in debt? Yes. Does the debt still need to be paid? Yes. Now, it's not a debt like you and I are talking about now. For example, the example I've just given you with money. It's a debt that cannot be paid by any human being, only Jesus Christ. So when you refuse the payment for sin, which is Jesus Christ, the debt still stands unpaid. And because this time stands on paid, if you die without accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior, accepting the offer for him to cleanse your debt, your debt remains unpaid. Hence the reason why you're sending yourself to hell by rejecting the payment for sin, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. So you see, God has never sent anybody to hell. They send themselves. Now, coming back to Zechariah, he was a man of God. A priest who knew the ways of God, but he missed God because his eyes was focused on the natural, despite experiencing the supernatural. Mary, on the other hand, was just a natural, normal human being. Not a priest, not, not a priest. No title was given to her. She was not an evangelist, nothing like that. Just a simple woman, but a simple woman of faith. The Bible says the kingdom of God is not in meat. The kingdom of God is not in drinking, but it's in power. The kingdom of God is not in meat, it's not in drinking, but it's in power. What is the power in the kingdom of God? It's the power of faith. Faith is the currency of heaven. To get from heaven, to buy in the, in, in the world that we live in today, to buy anything from anybody, maybe product or service, you need to give them money and they'll give you the product or offer you the service. But in the kingdom of God, you don't trade with money, you trade with faith. Faith is the currency of heaven. Faith is like a muscle. The more you exercise the faith, the stronger it gets. That's why we have no faith in the Bible. That's why we have small faith in the Bible. And that's why we have great faith. There's three types of faith. No faith, small faith, and great faith. The question is, how do you go from no faith to great faith? Or from no faith to small faith? It starts by you exercising your muscle of faith. Exercising your muscle of faith. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you're hearing the word of God and that gives giving you a little bit of faith, how can you exercise that faith? You hear the word of God, have more of the word of God dwelling in you consistently, continually, and applying that word. So when you're hearing more of the word of God and you're applying the word, you're hearing more of the word of God and you're applying the word. You're hearing more of the word of God and you're applying the word, you're growing your faith. Faith is like a muscle. It grows and it expands when you exercise it. When you exercise your faith. The question, my question to you is this. Are you exercising your faith in the things that you're hoping God for? Are you exercising your faith in the things you're believing God for? Are you exercising your faith in the things you've been waiting on God for? Or are you not exercising your faith? Are you passive about your faith but yet you're still acting like you're following God? Just like Zachariah did. A form of godliness denying his power. Denying his power. Mary said, how will this be? She asked the question. And then the angel explained to her, God is interested in dialogue. He said, come, let us reason together. God likes to have a dialogue with us. But what he doesn't want is you to live in faith. Why? Because the just shall live by faith. So what can we learn from this? Number one, there are a few key points I want to share with you quickly. Key point number one, we see that Zachariah was a faithful priest, but his faith was not faithful. Zechariah was a faithful priest, but his faith was not faithful. Let me say that again. Zechariah, we see in this example in the Bible, when the angel appeared to him, we can see he was a man of faith, but his faith was not faithful. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5 says this, Having a form of godliness, but denying his power, have nothing to do with such people. God doesn't want us to do to have any relationship with people who have a form of godliness but denying his power. What does that mean? A form of godliness, a form of godliness means you're very religious. 
but you have no substance of that which you claim to believe. People say things like, God is the God of the impossible, but, but then they struggle to hope in the same God of the impossible over their impossible situation. A form of godliness denying this power. It's an insult to the kingdom of God. Key number, point number two I want to share with you. The angel silenced the mouth of Zachariah in order to silence his doubts before it hinders the breakthrough he had been praying for. The angel silenced the mouth of Zachariah in order to silence his doubts before his doubts hinders the breakthrough he's been praying for. Key point number three, Zachariah's problem had to do with the fact that he was focused on the natural despite experiencing the supernatural move of God in his life. Now, I want you to notice something very, um, very carefully. Zachariah said, how can this be? An angel appeared to him and gave him a word that God said, you can have a son. He said, how can this be? He was in doubt. Now, so the question is, how do we overcome the barriers that we have to our breakthrough? Because we all have them. For some people, your barriers is this small. For some, it's that small. For some, it's huge. But barriers grow. Every barrier that you have in your life that you don't deal with grows. The Bible says something very interesting. It says, little foxes spoils the vine. Not big foxes. Little foxes spoils the vine. Not big foxes. So you have to catch those doubts that you have in your mind. As they creep in, catch them and pull them down. The Bible says, capturing every thought and bringing them down to the obedience of Christ. Any voice in your head that is not in line with the word of God must be brought down. Any thought that goes through your mind that is not in line with the word must be brought down. The word of God must be your final authority. When you hear something, whether it's a preacher that tells you, whether it's your own voice, whether it's somebody else, what doesn't matter who, cross check it with the word. Cross check it with the word. The word must be your final authority. Period. Now, so how do we overcome the barriers to our breakthrough? Number one, you need to deal with your unbelief. You need to deal with your unbelief. If not, your unbelief will deal with you and it will hinder your breakthrough. Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Mark chapter 9, verse 23 to 24. Let me just open that quickly. Mark chapter 9, verse 23 to 24. Here we, here we see something very interesting. Jesus said he couldn't do sorry, Jesus could not do many miracles because of their unbelief in Nazareth. And we see that again in James chapter 1, verse 2 to 8. Jesus could not do many miracles because of their unbelief. Some other translation puts it like this. Jesus could not do many miracles because of their tradition. Tradition represents your mindset. You see, sometimes it's not what we don't know that stops us or hinders us from our breakthrough. It's what we do know that won't allow us to think anything different. Unbelief is a mindset, even though it's, it's a spirit behind it, but it's still a mindset. Being inf you've been influenced by a spirit of unbelief that's giving you that mindset. Believing in God it's still a mindset. The Bible says, renewing your mind. Do not conform to the patterns of this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that you can test and approve the perfect will of God. Now, if Zachariah's mind was renewed. Or if it had been, if, he had a, if Zachariah had a continuous process of renewing his mind. He would have been able to test the perfect will of God. Was the angel who came before him. The Bible tells us to test every spirit. Don't worry about the prophecy that you receive. Great. Someone gives you a prophecy, fantastic. But test the spirit behind the prophecy. That is what's important. The prophecy is okay. The prophecy is not the main issue when you hear a prophecy. Someone comes and prophesies to your life. That's great. But before you accept that prophecy, hold the prophecy. Test the spirit behind the prophecy. Because the devil can prophesy for people. Same way God can prophesy for people. Now, if you're in doubt, let me give an example. Do you remember in the Bible when Jesus said, uh, he has to go to Jerusalem and uh, he said to, um, to um, Peter, who do men say that I am? Peter said, you are the son of the living God, you're the Messiah, etc, etc, etc. Then what did Jesus say? He said, flesh and bone did not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven. In other words, there's no way you could have known or perceived that I am the Messiah. Because some people think I'm Elijah, some people think I'm Moses because of the things that I did. People were describing Jesus as Elijah or Moses because he did similar things to what they did. Elijah called fire from heaven. That was a miracle. So Jesus went about doing good. He went about healing people. He went about, he went about doing miracles. So people were likening Jesus to those prophets. So that's why they said some said you're, like, you're, you're Elijah 
or you're the spirit of Elijah, or whatever the case might be. But Pete, John, um, Jesus asked Peter a specific question. But who do you say that I am? And Peter said, you are the son of the living God. And Jesus knew instantly there's no way he could have discerned that if God hadn't given him a word of knowledge. So it was the word of knowledge that God gave him that was enabled him to know who Jesus truly was. He didn't define Jesus by what he did, even though the people defined Jesus by what he did. It defined Jesus by who he truly was and is. Hallelujah. But at the same time, less than five minutes later, uh, Jesus said, I've got to go to Jerusalem. He said, no, 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 you can't go, blah, 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 and we can't let you go. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Same Jesus recognized the spirit of God operated in Peter is the same Jesus who recognized the spirit of the devil operating in Peter. Now, why am I sharing this with you? I'm sharing with you, this with you because somebody could prophesy for the spirit of God and at the same time prophesy for the spirit of the devil. But you need discernment. He, called, he told Peter, flesh and bone, flesh and bone did not reveal this to you, but the spirit of my father. When he said, you are the son of the living God. Less than five minutes later, Peter said, no, you can't go to Jerusalem. And he said, get behind me, Satan. Discernment is key. So that's why I don't just receive any prophecy. When you hear a prophecy, great. Hold that prophecy. Before you receive it, test the spirit behind the prophecy. Because that's what Jesus did. That's why he was able to discern between spirits. Hallelujah. But that's the side note. So how do we overcome the barriers to our breakthrough? Number one, I said deal with your unbelief. Deal with your unbelief. And I've looked at Mark chapter 9, verse 23 to 24. Your prayer should be, Father, help my unbelief. There's a man in there in the Bible, he, he was going through some difficulties. And he was believing God and he believed that God could do it. But he was struggling to believe <laughs> at the same time that God can do it. Let's just have a look at that scripture quickly. Mark chapter 9, verse 23 to 24. Let me just read that for you. Mark chapter 9, verse 23 to 24. And it reads, what do you mean if I can't? No, let, let me go a step. For, let me go a little bit backwards. Uh, Mark chapter nine, verse twenty-one to twenty-four. So I'm going to start from verse twenty-one. It reads, "How long is it? How long has this been happening?" Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied, "Since he was a little boy, the spirit often throws him into the fire or into water, trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can." What do you mean if I can? Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. Anything is possible if a person believes. Verse 24, the father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me with my unbelief. I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. Hallelujah. God has no problem with you struggling to believe. He has a problem with you staying in unbelief. He said, I do believe, but help me with my unbelief. Meaning, how can you believe and then say, help me with my unbelief? It means you believe, but you're struggling to continue to believe. That's what you're saying. I believe you can do it, but I'm still struggling because I've not seen the manifestation. Sometimes we go through life, we have challenges, and we're struggling to see the manifestation that God has promised. We're struggling to see the manifestation of the word of God in our life. God is okay with you saying, God, help me. Simple prayer. It doesn't have to be complicated. God, help me with my own belief. The Spirit of the Lord, help me with my own belief. Jesus Christ, help me with my own belief. And he will help you with your own belief. Point number two, and that's the last one I'm going to share with you. How do you overcome the, uh, the, the barriers to your breakthrough? Number one, you, you deal with your unbelief. And number two, you cultivate a lifestyle of continuously renewing your mind. Renewing your mind. Renewing your mind is like washing your dirty clothes. When you wear it, it goes out. You go to work or you go out on every single day wearing a particular type of cloth. You come back home, it might be dirty from sweat or whatever. Just the business of the day. What do you do? Do you put that same cloth back on the next day? No. You wash it so it's renewed. Every day you must renew your mind. You must renew your mind. Renew your mind. Why did God tell us to renew our mind? Because we live in the flesh. You are a spirit being. You live in the body and you possess a soul. Your soul is your mind, will and emotions. And those things are being bombarded with dirt. What I call dirt. Spiritual dirt every single day. And the way you get rid of those dirt is to wash your mind. You wash your mind with the word. You wash your mind with the word. That's what it means to renew your mind. The best way to describe what it means to renew your mind is this. Renewing your mind is simply this. Exchanging God's thoughts with your... Exchanging your thoughts for God's thoughts. Renewing your mind is exchanging your thoughts for God's thoughts. So when you think something and you believe... And you're starting to believe something, you say, hold on a minute. 
Let's see what God has to say about it. And if what God has to say about it is different from what you're saying about it, you dump what you're saying about it and you adopt what God is saying about it. That's what it calls you in your mind. So I want to encourage you that no matter what you're praying to God for, stay strong in your faith, stay strong hoping in God because God will never let you down. He will never let you down. He is a loving Father. Every time you're doubting God, ask yourself, if God can give me Jesus, heaven's most prized possession, why will he deny me this? Why will he deny me this? God loves you. God cares for you and he has a plan for your life. The only thing that could stop the plan that God has for your life is not the demons. It's your unbelief. It's your unbelief. Did you notice this? For you to be saved, you have to believe. Everything in the kingdom of God starts and ends with belief. In order for you to see the manifestation of God's glory and power in your life, you need to have the expectation. Let me say that again. In order for you to see the manifestation of God's glory and power in your life, you need to have the expectation. Hallelujah. I hope this blessed you. Please share this page. I'm going to comment shortly and put your comments. Let me know your feedback, how, where you got from this message. So share this with your friends and so that anybody else who gets to see this video can be blessed and obviously apply some of the pr principles that we've learned in the Word of God today um, f uh, to your life. And please, whatever you do, don't be a Zachariah, all right? <laughs> don't be a Zachariah. Be a Mary. How will this be? And God will tell you how it will be. God might have given you a dream right now and you're wondering, how will this take place? Ask him. Say, God, give me a progressive word. How will this dream come about? I know you can do it, but give me a progressive word, God. How would this dream come about? But never say to God, how can it be? Hallelujah. I hope this blessed you. This is Pastor Shea from My Identity in Christ Church coming to you live today on Facebook and Periscope. And I hope you've been blessed. Please share this page. I'll be posting some comments later on. And I want to read your comments. Share this page and put your comments and your thoughts and what you've got from this video. And that will be a, a great benefit to me and others who are going to watch this video later. So I'd like to bid you good night and God bless. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.